Hello and welcome to the Japan Archives, a podcast where we'll be delving into the histories and mythologies from Japan's long history. I'm your host, Thomas. And I'm your co-host, Heather. We'll also be reading a poem for you every week and giving a little history about the poet who wrote it. Ikimashou! Welcome back to the Japan Archives. This is episode 23. So Thomas, how are you today? Today? Hmm. Today I'm doing all right. Yeah. I mean, after yesterday was a washout with my migraine. So today is all good. I'm back to normal. And I'll be in Tokyo tonight and for the next few days. So maybe if I can, I will go to the Tokyo National Museum. But we'll see. Still got to do some Christmas shopping and things. You can shop at the museum um, museum shop there. It'd be a great place to buy some nice Christmas presents. Depending on who I'm getting them for, yeah. Good point. <laughs> but what about you? How are you doing? I'm doing really well today. Um, I returned back from my trip to America, and it was really lovely just being able to spend a lot of time with my family and having Christmas before Christmas. So I get I got to unwrap presents while everyone just kind of stared at me, and I, I brought some things for people, but you know, not nearly as much for you know like American style Christmas because I I got the plane ticket to go over there, so I couldn't buy a lot. So it was. It was really interesting because I was unwrapping presents and everyone was just looking at me. And I'm like, it feels kind of almost like a like a birthday in a way. Mm, yeah. But it was it was so nice that they did that for me, and I, I got to really enjoy spending a lot of time with my nephews. And they are so good at video games; they can just blow me out of the water playing Kirby. They're so much better than I am, and I've I played that game when I was a kid, so. It was good, and I'm, I'm glad to be back, and the jet lag is almost evened out, which is really nice. It was faster than normal this time. Well, I'm glad you had a good time in America. Next week, I'll get to watch uh, everyone else's Christmas, which will be fun for me, um, but I'm glad I got like a, a little small taste of Christmas before Christmas. I was going to say, so Thomas, what is our episode about today? Today is a bit of a strange one. It's like a three-in-one, so I was doing some research into one thing, which linked me to something else. And then when I was reading about that one, it also sent me on to something else as well. Each one is connected. So it's a bit of a story of how I discovered three different things about Japan. Ooh. But yeah, I still hope you like it anyway. I'm already intrigued. So if you're ready for me to start. I'm already intrigued. Please go. Okay. So I know we've talked about the different like yokai in previous episodes, we've had Tesso, we've had the Palace Sparrows, we had the Nupera Bowl, which you did for your ghost story. But I came across a, another one. So the book I found it in was called the Gazu Hyaki Yagyo, which we can translate as the Illustrated Demon Hordes Knights Parade. Now this book comes from 1776 and was compiled by a man known as Toriyama Sekien. Now like, he's famous as one of the go-to guys for yokai. He did many different books on all the different creatures, the ghosts, the yokai, the demons, and in fact his books proved to be so popular that later books that he actually made, he started to invent creatures entirely from his own mind because people were craving so much more from him. But this one comes from his first compendium, the one I just mentioned, and he wrote this book in three different parts. Part one called Ying, part two yang and then part three wind and this specific one comes from part three i was like yin yang and wind when i first read that i always had the amusing thought that he wrote the book intending it to be two different parts so yin and yang and then he realized oh there's a lot more i want to include need to pick an arbitrary name uh wind let's go with wind there that'll be fine okay this yokai called the I'm Shokera. And like I said, the Shokera is depicted in volume three of this book. And he actually devised this creature as a manifestation of a religion. I think religion is probably too strong of a term now. The religion itself has lost a lot of its 
following and it was reduced to by the Japanese government as to being less than religion to actually being just like a folklore. So it's not like a centralized religion and there's no central headquarters so it has a lot of, lost a lot of following and prestige over time. However, he drew this creature, the Shokera, as a manifestation of part of the religion, which is the second thing which I was going to talk about. The creature itself is, it's a strange like four-legged beast which he's shown depicted on the top of a building looking through one of the windows of the roof at the people below. Like I said, this really relates to a religion which was called the Koshin religion. And the Koshin religion, if we delve into the history of that, it was a religion that had Taoist origins originally, but then was later influenced by Shinto, Buddhism, and other local beliefs in Japan. So it was a religion that was a very big mixture of different things. This religion had three things that they worshipped or believed in to some extent. There was the overall god called Tente, um, Tente being very similar to the one of the original gods of the Taoist faith, the Jade Emperor. So they kind of took that idea and made it their own. So they worshipped him as a god. There was the concept of the the devil or a demon in their folklore called the Shomen Kongo. And in addition to that, there was the belief of these beings called the Sanshi. So the Sanshi were, they were strange creatures along the lines of like worms that lived within a human body. But they believed that within a, every human body that followed this faith, or probably all people in fact, that there lived these Sanshi, these three worms, that basically recorded the good and the bad deeds that the person they lived inside did throughout their entire life. What did these worms basically do with all this information? It said that on a night called Koshin Machi, which happened to be every 60 days in a cycle, it said that when a person was sleeping, the Sanshi would then leave your body and go up to heaven and talk to Tente, the god, and basically report all the good and bad deeds of that person to God so then he can judge whether they are a good or a bad person. Going back to the devil in their religion, um, Shomen Kongo, it said that one of his roles was if he could get hold of these three worms he would then make them ill so that they could not report up to Tente. But there were also other ways that you could prevent these worms from basically reporting to God, which links back to the yokai called the Shokera. From Toriyama Sekien's book he often, when he shows these yokai, he also writes something alongside them to basically say what they are and what their powers are, things like that. And he says that there is a chant in the Koshin faith which uses the word shokera. And basically if you write this chant on a piece of paper and keep it under your pillow or say it out loud on the night when these worms will go up to heaven, basically by invoking the word, the chant which uses the word shokera, it will ensure that the worms cannot leave your body and that they cannot um, report up to heaven. So basically, I suppose in a way, if you were a good person, you would have had no need for this because it's always beneficial for your good deeds to report up to heaven. But I suppose if you were a scoundrel or a murderer or a bad person in a way, you could invoke this chant using the word shokera to basically keep the worms inside so god would ever would never know that you are in fact a bad person and that is basically why toriyama sekien depicted this creature in his book he wanted to create a creature which was a manifestation of this chant and again this is why he depicts the creature on the person's roof so that he can be looking down at the person while he's sleeping to ensure that the worms do not leave the body of the person on this 60 day night cycle. So they were the first two things I learned. You said something about like bad deeds. The first thing I thought about, well, what if you steal a temple bell? So does that count as a like, bad deed? It would count as a bad deed, but obviously Benke, when he stole the bell, was of the Buddhist faith and therefore he would not have had these worms inside him, I guess. He, he was safe, and this is a callback to episode 18, Bell of Midera. It is indeed. So yeah, they were, like I said, learning about the yokai known as the Shokera led me on to the Koshin faith. So they were the first two things. But then there was one more thing that I found out, which I learned through 
the Ko Shin Fei. And that was, they had one final element to their religion, which I think that most people around the world would instantly, if they saw these, they would understand what they were. Before I tell you what they are, one of the reasons that this imagery that I'm going to tell you about is so well known around the world is because it comes from a scroll from this faith. Westerners, when they first came to Japan, they saw this and they learned about it and the idea quickly spread from then. And again, another nice callback to the Bell of Midera episode. A lot of the original manuscripts and scrolls um, that were made for this faith, these scrolls which have the creatures that I'm going to tell you about and also depict the Shomen Kongo, their idea of the devil, they actually can trace their origins back to centers such as Shitanoji Temple as well as Midera Temple. So yes, these scriptures making connections to these demons and other creatures do have their origins at certain important temples from around Japan. So the specific scroll that I was going to tell you about, there were three creatures depicted on them. And what I want to do is I want to say what their names are in Japanese and I want you to see if you can figure out what they oh, are. No. Okay. So the Japanese for these creatures, the first one is Mizaru, the second one is Iwazaru, and the third one is Kikazaru. Oh my gosh. It's hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, which I did in totally wrong order. It's the monkeys. It is the monkeys. So the monkeys can find, they can't find their origin specifically to this religion. It's not sure why they have connections to the Koshin faith, but that is the reason why the monkeys became so well known and widespread around the world. Oh my gosh. I, I did not know that. I always wondered about their origin. I, I didn't know it was from this. Yes. So that was the third thing that I found out. So yeah, it said that these are the best known example, um, the best known symbols of the Koshin faith. And like I said, it's not sure why they became part of this faith, but the intrigue they caused did cause them to be spread around the world. And yes, I didn't actually know the Japanese for these names until I saw them. So obviously, Zaru is the Japanese word for monkey, which is Saru. And then you have Mizaru, so Mi as in like seeing. You have Iwa, which is from the verb iu to say. And then you have Kika, which comes from Kiku, which means to listen or to hear. So yes, so you have the seeing monkey, the speaking monkey, and the listening monkey. And they are best known for their association with this Koshin faith. Oh, wow. I, I had, you, you really got me today because I had no idea that's where you were going. You had mentioned something a while back. Like, oh, I learned about the, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. You, you sprung that on me because I was not expecting that today. That is phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you just made my day. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, the, the, the sadu is monkey, but um, like the tongue twister, there's a sound change sometimes with, with Japanese. So you have the, the root word, which is sadu, but because you have the preceding um, syllable before it, it's easier to say. So instead of misaru, you go mizaru. So it's still the same word, but the sound's a little bit different. Yeah, I'm glad you explained that just now because I was never too sure why there was a sound change. So thank you for that. I was actually going to ask you to explain it, but you saved me the job. You're so welcome. Well, yeah, I, that sometimes throws me when I'm like learning Japanese and speaking Japanese because it, there's, yeah, like for us, you know, we don't, we do have some sound changes for some things, but for Japanese, there's a lot more sound changes in words when they are combined with other words um, or like conjugations and things like that. So I am, I am glad I could preemptively explain that to you. <laughs> That's exciting. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. So there you go. That was everything I had. It was very three very short things which all somehow connected nicely to one another. Yeah, it's it's really amazing that some of like this the stories and things that we have found so far. There's so many connections to other temples and to other shrines. Different things just in the world as well because those those three monkeys are. You know, you, I've seen them everywhere when I was a child and even now, although I don't, I see them sometimes like in stores and things, but yeah, I remember seeing a lot of them. And there are, like in Japanese history, there's so many connections to world history. So it's, it's nice to see these connections to like part of our culture and the origins of them in Japanese history as well. Exactly. 
Oh, I just realized I made a mistake, though. Oh no, what did you miss? I said a scroll, I meant to say a... It wasn't on a scroll. It was a carving over a door. Oh, okay. A 17th century at carving over a door for the Toshogu Shrine in Nikko. That's in Nikko? Oh, so the next time I go to Nikko, I want to go to that shrine. That's amazing. I need to go there. So, like, the, the long list of shrines we have to go visit is now becoming longer and longer. It is indeed. So anyway, that is my part done for today. So, well, last time, which was a bonus episode, you gave us a tongue twister. So I don't know what to expect from you today. What do you have? Well, I, I don't mean to disappoint, but it's I'm back to a poem this week. Today, though, is a poem by Bashol. Um, I actually encountered this, I think, was it the previous episode we did? I had a poem about, I think it was Bashol. And... Uh, the poem about the banana plant and the miscanthus. Ah, yes, the miscanthus. So I saw this one and I, I saved it because it was really, it, it, it made me smile. And it's what well, it was starting to get colder. Now we're getting a slightly warm spell now, but at some point we might get some snow. So this is a more winter themed poem, which isn't the start of winter the 21st. 22nd. Oh, okay. So on the 22nd. So we'll have a winter poem slightly before the winter solstice, but that's okay. Izasaraba, yukimi ni korobu, tokoro made. Did you hear anything you recognized? Oh, I think I heard two different words. Because your Japanese is quite good, you kind of say it quickly and fluently. So I'm like, ah, oh, it's too quick. So I think I heard yuki, which would make sense with it being a winter poem, mm. so snow. And honestly, I think the only other word I heard was the last one where you said made, so like stop. Hey, actually, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. So we got snow and stop. So the translation, now then, let's go out to enjoy the snow until I slip and fall. It's simple, to the point. I will have fun in the snow, but as soon as I fall over, I'll want to finish and go back inside. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this one because, um, yeah, similar. Like, well, where I'm from, we usually get snow and ice. So, yeah, this possibility of slipping and falling is very high. So this one really spoke to me. And I, I encountered this when I was doing some research. Apparently, he liked to, in, when he was living in Edo, he sometimes became more of a... Mm, he had a more solitary life. He sometimes wanted to have people come visit him and enjoy the company. And sometimes he just wanted to be left alone. So I can appreciate <laughs> Bashol's feeling. I think you can too. Actually, many people can appreciate Bashol's sentiment. But he, he has a, a really nice sense of humor. I mean, we had the that poem and then also the banana plant. I like his sense of humor. I like his just very... Is it droll the right word I'm thinking of? And completely relatable <laughs> because I think now, especially as you get older, when you're a kid, you can slip and fall so many times. But as an adult, one time you fall, yeah, you're out. You got to change clothes. It's cold. Go get hot cocoa. Winter is always very different for an adult than a child. A child is better at just picking themselves up and getting up and carrying on. Whereas an adult is like, a child could fall over a tree and carry on and just be as happy as they were before. You know, we can just sleep funny one night and then we'll be messed up for like three weeks. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. That is my poem today, unless you have any other questions. I do not. Well, I am really glad that you found the stories today. I was really happy to learn about the monkeys and I really want to go to that temple now. And since I brought us in, should I take us out? Sure thing. So thank you everyone for listening. We really appreciate you tuning in. Sorry about our absence last week. Um, we had some issues and difficulties, but we were able to put out the bonus episode earlier. We hope you enjoy it. And we hope to have more of those in the future. And we should be back next week with another episode. And we look forward to talking to you then. Me too. So again, thanks for tuning in, guys. And we appreciate you coming back every week to listen. Uh, if you enjoy the show, Please, please tell other people. Please pass on the word so more people might start tuning in and listening to this podcast. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening this week. And we'll talk to you next week. Matane. If you've enjoyed the Japan archives, please consider checking out historyofjapan.co.uk. 
a database we are making on Japanese history. You can also find the show notes for all our episodes here. If you're on Instagram, you can follow my account over at nexus underscore travels. That's N-E-X-U-S underscore travels. We also have a Facebook and Twitter page, which you can find at Japan Archives. If you're interested in little slices of life in Japan, be sure to check out my website over at heatheroveryonder.com. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes, have anything you'd love to hear about, head on over to historyofjapan.co.uk and send us a message. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give us a rating and review over on iTunes. Thank you again for listening, guys. Until next time, bye. Matane.